As you can see, Chris is uh, getting the zero tone mower going on and picking up her limbs and stuff. She got uh, some of the gutters painted. She got the uh, deck all washed down and she got these nice uh, front porch poles painted and the lights replaced. So we're making progress. the sewer pipe in just got to bury it and get another hose here to reach over to where we've got the clean out in to um, have sewer hookups while we continue to work on the house and that way we can take the toilet shower and all that out um, eventually the uh, washing and dryer we're gonna try to do that and move it after we get the back utility room done we'll just move the washer and dryer over there so that we can keep them operational as we finish the rest of the house so First order of business is the roof. We're still uh, waiting on a date from Tracy, but we also have to get the uh, these walls opened up still in the back on the inside to see what kind of damage there is from the water. Um, that's gonna be important before we put the roof on. All right, so we are hump day week three, and my buddy Weston down here is happy to tell you that we have finished getting the plumbing connected for the sewer, and he's been kicking some of the dirt back in there, but now what we're gonna do, we're gonna get on that tractor and uh, start filling the hole back in. Are you excited about that, Weston? Mm -hmm. Yep, all right. So you can see here we've got the uh, the T line in, and all the way down there. So we used a Schedule 40 four inch sewer pipe for the dump station. We just put a T into the three inch line that was there. I thought it was four inch. That's why we went with four inch. So whenever you're cutting into a already placed pipe that was already installed. You're gonna to need to want, use one of these stretch fittings because you can't piece in without having a little bit of room to piece in that T or that Y. It's actually a Y connector. And then we used a 22 uh, degree angle. We used another stretch connector coupler here just because 22 didn't put us exactly in line so we were able to bend it just a little bit to get us a nice line and use traditional couplers the rest of the way. Got another 22 here, then a 45, and then a 90, and a cap on a clean out. We've got about an inch and a half of fall across here. You don't need much. You just got a little bit of fall across here. You don't want to have too much because you don't want the water to run too fast and leave the solids behind. You want the solids and water to go about at the same speed. So we're going to start filling this in. Come on, let's get on the tractor.
I've got the uh, sewer line in and the water line all connected and winterized to the RV. Starting to work on some electrical around here. Uh, so we, as you know, we got the electrical panel upgraded uh, for the house and now we're trying to figure out certain electrical needs. One of those needs was replacing this uh, problem or finding a problem on it. There was a problem in this panel. Um, so before we started, well, first of all, there's a couple problems. You notice in this panel, there's supposed to be a feed. Your feed's supposed to come in there. What they did was they ran a 30 amp directly off the main breaker and they just ran a 30 amp uh, wire. I think it's eight gauge wire um, into here. And they ran it right to a breaker. So this 30 amp breaker is powering the whole bus. Um, that's not how it's supposed to work. You're supposed to come in there, so you have power on both sides up there, and then you put your breakers in um, and pull off of that main power that's coming in. <clears throat> so we'll fix that because we're going to run a 50 amp in here uh, and, and put a 50 amp feed in here and then 30 amp and 20 amp breakers. So right now the 30 amp breaker here is just simply to power this. It's coming from the house. Um, this and this are for outlets. This is the outlets and lights for the shop or for the office. These are the outlets in here in the shop. This was the lights in here in the shop and maybe a few other things. Now the lights were attached to the outlets for the office, outlets and lights for the office. This breaker was tripping. So I split those two lines off, put them on two different breakers and then this breaker was tripping, which was for the lights in here. So we had a, a ceiling fan. That's where it was going to first. Then from there, branched off and came over to this outlet right over here where we had these two fluorescent lights, and then it went over to that, there. then from the center, it also went over to those that outlet over there, two fluorescent lights, and there's also one coming from, let's see, coming from this one, there is another one that goes over to this wall, and then goes over that way, and I'm not sure where it goes. So I, I disconnected everything from the, uh, I took down the ceiling fan, disconnected everything here from the ceiling fan, it was working power to here just fine. Tied it in with that outlet and whatever that stuff is over there, and it tripped. So I went over to that outlet, disconnected everything, disconnected it from the switch, disconnected it from this circuit. So now we just got a home run shot coming into here. Junction box connected there with those two wire nuts, as you can see, going over to my outlet. Just for now, just to test it out to figure out where the problem is. Outlet's working fine. The lights in the fluorescent light are all burned, burned out, so we need to get some more new bulbs. So minimum, we're going to have some lights in here in the shop off of that one breaker. I will come back later and figure out the, uh, the switch wiring for that. I'll also figure out what's going on with this other circuit over here. Um, and then I will also tie in these lights. I'm not sure if we're going to put a, a fan back in the middle. I'll check with Chris to see if she wants to put some type of fan here in the middle. So after that... Um, this weekend, I'm gonna work on getting 50 amps over here to the house. We've got a uh, little hole there in the foundation wall that I'm actually going to put the cable through, 50 amp cable, put a junction box right there or a 50 amp receptacle right there for the RV. I might have to get a pigtail extension. I don't think my cord, my cord's 25 feet. It's probably gonna be about 10 feet shy coming to this junction box. Um, then eventually, I'm, I doubt I'll do it this weekend, but I'm also going to, from here, run another 50 amp back to the main panel and put it in conduit underground over to the shop to replace that feed over there. And then eventually, we'll need another 50 amp from the box on the other side going to the pool. So we should be good with uh, electric after that. It's Friday morning, week three. We're wrapping up the uh, the business week here at the homestead, and uh, we have a lot of stuff planned for this weekend. Um, today, I've got a fairly light schedule. I'm going to get a couple hours in this morning. Then I've got a few calls um, around lunchtime and into the afternoon, and then I'll be able to spend a few hours again the uh, afternoon and evening um, here at the homestead working on some things. So we've been working on, obviously, the plumbing trench and uh, we've got the trench done, got the line in, and we've got it refilled about 80% across here. Um, there, as you get closer to the house, you may notice before 
they had uh, they had cut some things down. There's one big tree stump over there, and then there was multiple of these smaller bushes. Perfect indication why you want to be careful of what you plant as far as bushes and especially larger trees next to your house. Getting those roots out, some of those roots were gigantic, coming over to the foundation, possibly even damaging the foundation if they weren't taken out. So um, it's been quite a chore getting those roots out, even with the excavator. Um, so be careful with that. The other thing we found here is this house was built in 1999, but I'm thinking there was a house here or a home here before this house because we found and we've seen evidence of uh, old foundations out in the property, some old foundation pieces we found through here. And actually right over there, there was an old cistern. <clears throat> so cisterns typically weren't something you would install in a house 20, 22 years ago. Um, so we, uh, I, I basically excavated out the first couple feet of that. Uh, it was a brick round cistern. If you're not familiar with what a cistern is, it's basically just a, uh, a rain catchment type of uh, well and then you have your um, your lines ran into your house from there. So it, uh, we wanna put flower beds in here. So we wanna make sure six inches down or so, um, we've got good dirt to, uh, to, to dig into and not all these roots and rocks. Um, oh, the other thing we came across here was the, uh, was this electric line. Interesting thing about this electric line right down here this is the 30 amp that's going out to the to the shop. We're going to replace that with a 50 amp. Uh, it wasn't running conduit. Um, it is proper wire for 30 amp, but it's not proper wire for 50 amp. So, uh, and also, I don't like the fact that it's only a few inches, maybe six inches under the ground, maybe less than that as you go across here to the shop. Um, just like the electric that we showed you in the front, um, which is only a few inches under the ground going out to those light posts. Um, and actually we had a problem with those. Yesterday, Chris was washing the deck and I guess some of those wires, when they were installing them or maybe they stapled them underneath the, uh, the, the porch deck there and they had nicked the wires, right? So when the water from the w washing the deck ran down that electrical wire and it hit that little split port, it uh, started arcing. So I'm gonna have to replace, I plan on replacing all that wiring out in the front as well. And we'll show you that in just a few minutes. What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, put in a 50 amp RV outlet over there. And we're going to run another 50 amp, come through that junction box with an RV outlet, put it in conduit, take it down here and take it underground. So I think they used here, it's going right there and then going down. So I haven't verified this yet because I haven't got up under the house. But I'm thinking what they did was they used the piping for the old cistern as their content, conduit for an exit and entry point into the house. So used an old water pipe, probably cut it off uh, on underneath the house, just as their through point to the house so they didn't have to go through the foundation. So uh, next order of business today also is um, Chris finishing up the porch. So let me take you over here and show you some of the thing, the porch. So she did a pretty good job of, uh, of peeling off all the... Uh, the soffit and, and, and lattice work they had around this deck that we didn't like. Uh, she also painted those footers, or pillars. She painted the, the footers and pillars there, but we're, we're, we might remove those. We're definitely going to replace those footers and pillars or put more footers and pillars in and properly spaced because as you can see, they did not put all of the posts on the deck that are supporting the weight of the roof over the pillars and that's the way they're supposed to be installed so we'll be putting in some new footings new pillars probably next spring we're not going to mess with that right now but uh, what chris is doing right now is just cleaning the deck off pressure washing it cleaning it with some special um cleaning solution and then staining the deck so she'll be working on that today um the other aspect that we'll be working on for this weekend is uh not only cleaning up that ditch that i talked about out here also uh, finishing the wiring in the shop. So the internal wiring in the shop had a problem. I'm gonna figure, figure that out. I've already got one half of the shop working as far as lights. Um, I just need to finish that out, tear the, tear the rest of the ceiling out because it's poorly built and, uh, and redo that wiring. And then the big project this weekend that we're gonna dive into 
is figuring out what type of real damage we have behind these walls. So we know this window and this roof was leaking right here. So most likely we can tell right here, this entire wall is shot probably all the way up into the ceiling. So we're going to have to build some type of temporary support wall most likely here on the inside and then tear that wall out. But the reason why it's urgent right now is we, we want to make sure that this header beam up here or header above the windows or actual rafters where they come and meet the top of the wall, that there's some good wood up there because Tracy, our roofer, is going to be out here in a week or two. He's going to build a new roof with better slope. There's hardly any slope on this roof, and that's what's causing the water not to drain off into the gutters, but actually come back, leak down the wall, and also leak down these back walls. Uh, so you had a combination of rain, water, leakage coming in here and you also had you can smell and you can see the pet stains as well so um lots to uh, get to here so we're going to get this whole back area from where we started back here we're going to get the flooring ripped up the walls opened up and a lot of the walls in here out because we're not really just going to have one wall right here no closet here no bath bathroom here bathroom's going to be moved back into this room this is going to be the mud room. I'm going to put a door in somewhere here and take this window out. So a lot of work to be done in here. We got to get it opened up to see what we are up against. So that's the plan. 